Mm-hmm. Enough, as you guys see already, 88 don't have no uh, no swing, but he make all the beats, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I be dancing in the studio, man. <laughs> What's up with you, my man? Hey, man, it's a pleasure to have you on the uh, podcast, man. I'm a big fan of you. You know what I mean? Before I even start, man, I want to give you some roses, bro. Um, when I first met you a long time ago, I said, Eddie, yeah, I need an interview, bro. When I first started, <laughs> and Eddie said, hey, man, I can't give you an interview until all my artists that I work with get their interview first, man. I said, damn. Okay. My dude, boy, my dude put put his artist in front of himself. He didn't want to shine, man. It's not it's not about me, man. It is you about you, me? man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you the man that make all the beats for the city. Come on. How do you feel, man? How do you feel about that? I'm grateful, bro. Hey, you know what? It's like every time I, I go on Instagram or something like that, and I be like, damn, who's these this, these artists, these crazy-ass beats, these crazy-ass songs, and you go in the credits and the credentials, it's 88 The Gang. Oh God. How you feel? So are you, do you feel like you're responsible for curating the sound of San Diego? That's what they tell me. That's what they tell you? <laughs> That's what they say. I heard that. I heard that. Hey, man, this, before we get too deep, man, let's start from the beginning, man. Um, let's get your background on how you, uh, are you from San Diego? How were you raised in San Diego? Nah, I moved here when I was like 18. Okay. And I've been here my majority of my adult life, you know. Oh, so where did you move from? From Virginia. Virginia? What well, part of Virginia? Virginia, I used to, I used Virginia to, Beach. Virginia Beach? I'm glad. Damn, that's a beautiful city. Right. That's a beautiful city. They got this crazy old bridge over there, man. That thing's probably like 10 miles long. Mm, the tunnel? And, yeah, that tunnel. Right. Ooh, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. So um, you moved from Virginia Beach where your parents were in the military or something? Yeah. Where branch of service? Navy. Navy? Okay, yeah. okay. And what age was it? 18. 18? Mm-hmm. And when you, was it like a culture shock when you got to San Diego? Kind of, because California different, bro. Yeah. On everything. What are some some major things that you notice when you uh when you touch down in, on the West Coast? The weather. The weather? On oh, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I weather told is you. different. Like, I'm used to like all four seasons. Mm-hmm. And then coming over here, it's like it's summertime all year. Yeah. Until it's wintertime. It's like summertime till the sun go down. You feel me? Yeah. I'm glad. Hey, people don't understand that on the West Coast, man, those, those four seasons to see those those uh, those leaves and everything change different colors, man. It's so right. beautiful, bro. Right, everything. Yeah, man. That's dope. So uh, what got you into music, though? What was the thing that kind of bridged you to, you know, turned you on to music? Shit, I've always been fucking around. Like, I'm going to say when I was in middle school, mm-hmm. like, I started fucking around a little bit. But I, I never really took it that serious. I was, you know, I used to play instruments. Drums, trumpet, you know. Mm-hmm. And then when I moved over here, like I used to make beats on my phone, like on the iTouch. No way, you know, cat. And I was like content with that too. Yeah. I was like, man, it's crazy because I'm like, I used to tell myself like I'm never gonna buy like all the extra shit. Mm-hmm. My dumb ass didn't buy like a whole studio, like <laughs> <laughs> nigga. <laughs> I got two studio rooms, like everything, like everything now, like. But it's cool. Yeah. Was there anybody in particular that kind of turned you on to music? Did you were you influenced by somebody who's making beats or anybody popular? I mean, growing up, mm-hmm. I've always been like a hip hop head. Like, okay. I used to listen to Lupe Fiasco. Okay. And then just like nigga Pharrell, Fifty Cent, like DMX. There's a whole bunch of it. It's like almost everything. I like. I don't know. I kind of like grew up off music. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So yeah. In particular, like what artists, like you know, that you, you know, stuck to the most. Lupe Fiasco. Lupe Fiasco. No cap. So you're like an underground type of hip hop backpack head. <laughs> Boy, you, pff, ask me anything. No cap. Damn, that's crazy. That's like, crazy. That's crazy. When I moved over here, I couldn't make West Coast beats to save my life. No like, cap. At all. <laughs> mm. But. You know what I'm saying? Actually, I was working with this. The first artist I really was working with, this dude from Oceanside, Sami Sai Fly. Mm. He like showed me a whole bunch of shit. Like, hey, this is how I want my beats. Like shit like this, and I just like got just doused in it. Like you feel me? Yeah. So, but yeah. That's crazy. So, cause right now your your beats are super West Coast, super super think duper so? West Coast. I think so. Some people say they sound like. I look at it like it's my interpretation of the West Coast sound. Like I, I'd like to hear it because when I first came over here, I didn't like the West Coast music at mm-hmm. all. Like I thought every beat sounded the same. Interesting. And it's like I don't know. It, it, I wasn't rocking with it until I started finding artists out here and building sound with them. 
So, so you wasn't influenced by like people like Dr. Dre, people who like iconic. Oh yeah, figures. for sure. Like for sure, show sure. like when I, before I came over here, like the biggest artist that I knew was like Nipsey Hussle. Mm. Like I seen him move around. Like when I was in Virginia, I seen that he like he did a song with Drake. Oh damn. I was like, dang, he like the only West Coast rapper that's like on the Drake. Like over there, everybody was on Drake. Like, yeah. like listen to this nigga, but but then he was fucking around with Currency, Wiz Khalifa. I was big on Wiz Khalifa and Currency growing up mm. or anything. I got you. That's crazy. So um, on the West Coast, who's the one of like one of the first artists you you know started working with? First artist, Sami Side Fly. Okay, yeah, yeah, or anything. Like and he he kind of molded you to like more of that West Coast sound for sure. Yeah, because, yeah. I was I remember the first beat I showed him like he rapped on it and he went crazy, but he was like, man, this is like a Dr. Dre beat. <laughs> like <laughs> it was just a lot of it was a lot of per- a lot of percussion. That's like my shit. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's but, dope. Uh, nah, he really he, he, he like shout out to Sami Side Fly no no cap. Shout out the whole Ocean Side for sure. Hell they, yeah, they, they put me on or anything. So you're very popular in San Diego, man. Like, um, there's so, some hot producers, beat makers in San Diego, but you're definitely one of those people that stands out the most. And like I said, here, most of the time that you know, when you hear a, a top artist in San Diego, your your stamp is on it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, how'd you get that stamp? Like, chopping on '88, <laughs> like the tag. Yeah, the tag. It's crazy. So like, outside of Simon Side Fly, the first like San Diego artist I was working with, mm-hmm. where I like reached out to, was like Ace Take Millions. Mm. He was like cold as fuck to me. Like he used to go live and just be rapping, making songs on live like ten minutes. I'm like, damn, this dude hard. I had did a song with him, and it's crazy. I had him and Simon Side Fly on the song, mm. and this other dude Guapo, and uh, we were supposed to shoot a video, and it was like uh, the tag came about because like I, I I used to be on some shit like I can't wait for people, bro. Like. Mm. I went and bought me a camera. I was like, man, I'm about to start shooting videos too. Like, can't wait to do shit. I'm just, I'm impatient sometimes. So it's like, we're waiting on Ace to come down to do do a video. He's coming from like, I think he was from in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. Not Sacramento. He was in he was in the Bay. He was at Empire, and he was on his way down. He was like, hey, you gonna make it down? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That nigga ain't make it. <laughs> <laughs> so we like, and it's just, we like literally in my garage. Like everything started in the garage. So. We literally waiting for this nigga, and he like. Once we realized like he ain't gonna make it, we like, all right, let's just make another song and shoot it, cause I'm ready to shoot. You feel me? So like, we're working on a hook, and the song is called Drop. That's how I got my tag. Mm. But we're working on a hook. Literally like, hey, we gonna do the hook because we are gonna shoot it like this. You gonna say this? The, the camera gonna pan on you when you say this, and it's gonna switch to him. And then it's gonna be a third person that's gonna say, I'm gonna tap in ADA, he got them chops on him. And I didn't think nothing of it. Like, mm. like we literally made the beat over claps. Like it was just claps and we were working on a hook. They did the hook over claps. That's crazy. They went like down the street to play basketball or some shit and I started making a beat around what they said. And then they came back, the beat was put together and they added their verses and stuff and it was hard. And I. I looped the hook and it was cold and I started mixing it and then uh, I had my brother say say the tag part because mm-hmm. like I don't know they were saying it weird and I was like uh let's switch it up you know what I'm saying I'm like hey 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 bro come hey say this real quick and then he's like all right for sure he did it one take sounded cold I was like all right bet start mm-hmm. mixing it and then when I was mixing it it sounded weird because it was like a third person yeah like that wasn't on the song type shit so I just I threw the little telephone effect on it. After I heard the telephone effect, I'm like, oh, it'll sound, it'll look dope if I, you know, in the video, if I put the little chirp sound and it'd be like, they on their phone talking and shit. Yeah. As soon as I threw that little chirp in the little telephone, I was like, ooh, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I slid that shit to the front right before the beat drop. I was like, ooh, I'm finna put this shit on everything that I got right now. Yeah. And it was literally like the coldest shit. It was like literally sheer luck that if Ace would have pulled up, I would never have my fucking shot at the Ace take millions, no cap. That's crazy, bro. You being motherfucking late on nigga time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I got this far, no cap, because the tag is, that, that tag is hard. Yeah, it is, it is cold. That's like the first thing you notice, you know what I mean, when you hear one of your beats for mm-hmm. sure. So what's the creative process of making these beats and, and to make them different? Because you got hundreds of beats out there. 
I just catch a vibe, bro. So you just go in the, in, in the booth or the studio or whatever? And I, you hear, just... I, I hear some shit. Like, I work with a couple of producers and shit, but for the most part, I go in there and I just vibe the fuck out. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. Outside of, that. outside of that, like, I might be fucking crazy <laughs> in the head because, like, some shit, I hear some shit and I'll hear it completely different than somebody else. I'll be like, oh, man. Mm. And I just, I just get active. That's it. Yeah. When did you know you made it? In San Diego as a producer, beat maker. I don't think I have. <clears throat> man, bullshit, man. Come on, man. It's just the beginning, man. Stop it, man. Come what? on, 88. Y'all don't even know shit. Come on, 88. Look, I did some shit. I'm just not content with a lot of shit. Like, I be telling people I'm trying to buy Jupiter. Mm. That's where I'm at. Let's like, go. We, you feel me? Like, we not. It's a lot more that, you know niggas can do so I just look at it like that I just keep on treat everything like it's my first day on the job absolutely so but your credentials your credentials your credentials are heavy in San Diego for sure you know what I mean like I said a lot of prominent artists are you know their career is responsible and those beats are you know curated from you you know what I mean hell yeah hell yeah I was thinking about this other day and I was like a lot of people talk about the west coast and in different regions of the west coast and there's you know, the Bay Area has a particular sound. You know, mm -hmm. LA has a particular sound. Um, for somebody who makes the sounds, you know what I mean? Do you think San Diego have a particular sound? Of course, for sure. How would you describe the sound of San Diego music? So, I thought about this, I'm like, damn. It's like a melodic bass, like, bassy melodic shit. Like, I call it trunk music. Mm -hmm. Like, just some shit you slap in your car type shit. Like, it's, it's a vibe, like, you know? Shout out to the Bay in LA. The Bay definitely got their own sound. But I feel like for the long, like the longest, like people were trying to imitate the Bay. Cause California big as fuck, bro. Like, you know, mm -hmm. most states is like, could fit in this one state. You feel me? So it's like, I don't know. I look at the Bay as like their own region. LA has their own region. SD's like, I don't know. They got a lot of culture out here, bro. Mm -hmm. like, it's just not exploited. You know, a lot of people just don't know. It's no exposure for real. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to do, though. I heard that. EBK, Young, Young Jog, EBK, all the whole group, they have a particular sound that's kind of sweeping through the region of the West Coast. Oh, yeah. You know, that that hard boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? Right. That shit's tough, though. It's tough. You I know fuck what I mean? With it. So do you. Shout out uh, R.P. Sloby, bro, or anything. He, he, he really he spunked up the whole, his whole region mm -hmm. or anything. We, I feel like if. He would still be here. He'd be a mainstream artist. Wow. No cap. Mm. Like, for real. I heard that. But, yeah. J-Bo and Jock, they got it, too. You feel me? They got the torch. Do you think it's okay for us to, you know, be influenced and take some of that sound and, and implement, it, implement it to our sound in the, on the, yeah, of course. the San Diego? You know, you think that's... I mean, I used to, like, growing up, I used to listen to Nas and, and a whole bunch of shit. He said some shit a long time ago that I just... I just rock with. He said, "No idea is original." Mm -hmm. So it's like everything's a melting pot, bro. Let's go. Everything has converted from jazz music to hip hop, hip hop to rap to gangster rap. You know, everything has a source. You know, one hundred percent. So, <clears throat> so San Diego has a. You know, we're growing. We're not as like you know big as like the other bigger cities and things like that. You know, what can we do yeah. to make this, you know, this culture better or bigger? Uh. We just gotta keep on stomping, bro. Like, I don't know. I look at San Diego music like it's better than most music. I agree. There's a lot of good artists out here. I agree. There's a lot of culture out here that needs to be exploited, but I feel like that's the only thing missing. You go, you know, LA has always had like, like that stereotype, like, oh yeah, the game banging shit, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's like, that's always been their shit for since like Tupac and you know the Snoop Dogg and all that shit, like that's been in they shit. That's L.A. They got big off that. Every city has had a time where it was like Atlanta was Atlanta wasn't Atlanta until like Gucci Mane, fucking Zaytoven, mm -hmm. that whole wave. That's I feel like that was like the start of they shit. Even though Atlanta has always been lit, but that was like the beginning, like where everybody else was like, oh shit, like ain't nobody nobody was really on that until like they really went up. So it's like 
most cities don't get that shine until they have a wave. Mm. So our wave is here. You feel me? I feel like there's a lot of eyes on San Diego. Mm-hmm. And it's just up to us to present the best work. You feel me? 100%. Who are some like emerging artists? You know, you got your ear to the city. You work with a lot of different people. Who are some up and coming artists that you think that's gonna can transform transform the sound of San Diego and take us to that next level? Like for the West Coast, San Diego. For San Diego, San Diego. Mm-hmm. You got a couple, bro. You got Flashy B. Ooh, shout out to my boy Flashy. Flashy B is cold. Stupid cold, bro. You got Yabi. Yes, sir. She had the gang Yabi. She had the gang Keek. They different, bro. They the trendsetters from the city. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, they still up and coming. Cause like, I look at it as like, man, we don't got no little babies or we don't got no superstar. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Rob Stone, shout out Rob Stone. Yeah, absolutely. But it's like, since Rob Stone, like who has been around the world? You feel me? Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm like, that's what I'm aiming at. Yeah. Trying to buy Jupiter, you feel me? Let's like, go. But yeah, uh, there's one dude, Cole, Lil Knock. Let's go. Shout out to Lil Knock. Lil Knock, he next. Next? No cat. What makes Lil Knock special? What are you thinking of? His Except word play. Everybody else. His word play. Mm. Uh, he just, you know, he the full package. Like, you know, that's how I look at it, bro. It's like, talent is talent, bro. Like, mm. I just feel like if, once people get the, the right exposure, it's over with. Like, if I was to take two artists and not put them in front of Two million people, you know, I feel like they'll gravitate towards him. You mm. feel me? Same thing with Flashy B. Same thing with B3 Glizzy, too. Free B, free B3 on everything. B3 yeah. Glizzy on everything. That's my dog. All right, when he get out of jail, it's going to be a wrap. Oh, yeah. Y'all better, pff, y'all better drop all your music. Mm-hmm. No cap. Cause I, mean, boy, I got a free song on my phone he did from jail or anything. He come cold. Damn, that's crazy. And shout out to Flashy B too, man. My guy Flashy out there killing it from Escondido, oh, right, uh, San Diego too, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And let's let you guys know San, uh, Escondido is San Diego. I know Flashy going to be telling it's not, but it is, you know what I <laughs> mean? So we're going to make that official right now, Flashy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. God. Absolutely. Who would you say one of the, the a prominent artists that kind of made your career? Mm. To help you get to that next level. Little Weirdo. Little Weirdo. Sure. Wow. Little Weirdo, he one of them. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, it was a couple artists, bro. Uh, before Little Weirdo, I was working with this one dude, Bad Damon. Mm. He was pretty cold on everything. He like, he's the one that kind of like showed me some shit. You feel me? Uh, Little Weirdo for sure. B3 Glizzy on everything. I feel like I, I had it like, I always have like an era with specific artists like when i lock in hey bro pull up like mm. it's like six months straight and we cooking up like so i don't know i feel like i'm just getting my feet wet though really not for real sometimes there's a lot of drama in san diego a lot of these artists you know i have beefing with each other <clears throat> and you're cool with everybody so how do you you know keep the course you know what i mean work with both artists without causing any friction or any drama I just keep it business, bro. Like, I don't be knowing what's going on, but at the same time, I be knowing enough to move around. So it's like, there's business in the streets, and it's like, there's business in the building. So it's like, you know, keep that shit up. Like, if y'all got issues, nigga, I don't give a fuck. Mm. Tell a nigga to his face, I don't care. I'll be working with this nigga when I want, when I feel like it. Because at the end of the day, I'm not from out here. I'm not under no, I ain't under nothing. Except mm-hmm. for, you know, God. You feel me? So it's like, I don't have to. Earth is my turf. That's how I just really rock. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Y'all got issues, do your homework. I don't care. Like, at the end of the day, I'm trying to make good music. So it's like, I don't even be paying attention to most shit. Because mm-hmm. if it's that serious, then it'd be super serious. You feel me? So it's like. Right. But yeah, a lot of shit is just like, you know, a lot of people just got to learn how to deal with their emotions. That is a fact, bro. But at the same time, should be happening. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's life. You feel Absolutely. me? So you have, you, have you ever been in the studio before and something kind of popped off? You have any Never. stories you can tell? No. Nothing? Nah. You want to do something in the studio, bro, you got to get down with me first. Like, mm. I pay for all this shit. It's 
my business. You feel me? So absolutely, this is how I look at it. Like if you can't control yourself, I be telling my folks, hey, hey, drive to the Coronado Bridge and jump. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you a cold piece, man. You got some pimp in your blood, bro. Hey, man. You got some pimp in it's your blood. That. It's just like, bro, it's business, bro. Like, y'all go do that shit somewhere else. I don't care. Have you ever had a problem? We had to cut the our artist off before in the past. Mm. Not really. I mean, I just say, I'm, majority of the time, I be trying to speak life into these because at the end of the day, I'm older than a lot of niggas. Hey, man, how old are I, you, bro? Hey, don't worry about it, man. <laughs> my dude speak with some wisdom hey, over look, here. I be trying to tell niggas like a lot of shit is not important, bro. Like mm-hmm. if you really think about it, say it out loud, bro. You sound stupid. Like are you tripping? Because what? You all right? Some shit is serious though. Yeah. I'm not even gonna downplay it, but majority of shit. Once I find out the root, I'm like, I be in the studio with a lot of niggas. I be finding out the root of shit. I'm like, bro, y'all niggas corny as fuck. That's why I'm like, I mean, if you think about it, right? So you're making these beats and you have these relationships with these artists and they're mm-hmm. kind of making music about the people you probably know. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it, hey, that should, like, it won't put you in an awkward rap, position. R- rap has always been a, comp- like a, a, a competition, bro. So it's like, yeah. I get it. Some shit, I'll tell them, like, hey, bro, don't say that shit, bro. That's crazy. Mm. Like, the fuck? You're not even rocking like that. Like, why are you doing that? <laughs> But not even like that. It'd be like, I'd be trying to be as positive as possible. Because at the same time, I look at everybody like, you know, like a community. Like, bro, mm. y'all don't get it, bro. Some of these people do not fuck with you off rip. Mm. You know what I'm talking about. Like, some of these people are not going to fuck with you off rip. Why ask for that attention? Like, that shit. And then putting on, I feel like, I don't know, putting shit online... It's just unbelievably corny to me, bro. So you saying like putting like disc records and stuff? Like saying shit, like crazy shit, like bro, that's crazy. Mm. You really just gonna do that? Like, I don't know. For for the most part, it just be like, there's a better way than what you're doing. Like, are you doing this for the art or are you just trying to just, you know, be all crazy on, on the mic and shit? Sometimes that shit be hard though, I ain't gonna lie. I remember, I was making beats for some niggas. They was, I did all their diss records mm. <laughs> against each other. I was like, shit, <laughs> shit, the money good. I don't care. But yeah. fucking, uh, but at the same time, it's like it's it's the culture out here though. Like you gotta like, I understand enough that you know some shit. It's just it's sometimes that's what niggas do. You feel me? Mm. So it's like, it's all in good sport to me. You feel me? Sometimes I look at it and I feel like this. I feel like it's a marketing tool, you know what I mean? Because you come and make a, a diss track on somebody and it'll create a lot of tension for that artist. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, over time, the artist, once that, you know, that diss track kind of fills out, you know, you got to rely on your talent. Mm-hmm. And then if you're not, have, you're not, if you're not a talented artist, yeah. then you're, your career is going to dwindle. That's what I mean. I be telling niggas like, look, bro, you want to be lit for just, you basically making music for like, probably 25 motherfuckers bro mm. you making music for them at the end of that you feel me because it's targeted towards a you know small group of people but at the same time it's like people love that shit yeah. negativity sells so i get it but at the same time it's like i don't know imagine that's the only thing you're known for you ain't got no real music to 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 back you as an artist and you really want to be a rapper that's you dope. feel me so it's like some shit, it's cool, whatever, but for the most part, if that's all you're making, like, ain't nobody trying to hear that shit all day. Some yeah. people, you know what I'm saying, trying to vibe out, you know what I'm saying? If you you got to understand, like, who your target audience is. So it's like, I don't know. I look at it a different thing. Like, a lot of motherfuckers just don't, they be thinking just in that moment type shit. Mm. I didn't have motherfuckers come to the studio like, nigga, I need to make this. I'm like, bro, no, that's corny as fuck, bro. You just about to, like, you know, you about to just spunk up their whole career, and then if they can really rap, they finna just, you know. But at the same time, it'd be like, I don't know. I'd be that. trying to, I'd be trying to do little shit just to prevent stupid shit from happening. So that's dope, though, man. Yeah, that's dope. Cause a lot of these artists are young, you know. what I mean, we did. I dumb. I did dumb shit when I was younger. You know okay. what I'm saying? You, I understand. It's like it's age. Like some niggas. They just young. They don't get it, like, bro. Them people is watching. You feel me? One hundred percent. 
don't give them a breadcrumb. You feel me? Like, if it's like that, then let it be like that. You feel me? I understand life from a, a, a aerial view where it's like, bro, some shit is just what it is. So don't put it on the internet. You feel me? That I shit. heard that. So if it's like that. But if it's all in good sport, you know what I'm saying? Shit, yeah, pop your shit. I don't care. You feel me? I'm like water when it comes to this shit, bro. I don't. I, I, I care enough to be like, all right, this ain't too crazy. Some shit be super crazy. I ain't gonna lie. Mm-hmm. But then, I don't know. It just really depends on, on what it is. But I don't be trying to focus on that shit. I heard that. I always try to get people out of their element. <clears throat> like, hey, let's make this. Hey, let's make a song like this. Like, B3, he was, like, one of the artists, like, I'll give him an idea, and he'll run with it and, and, and make a song, and it'll be like, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with Flashy B or anything. We're like, hey, bro, let's do some intentional shit. Yeah. You feel me? Like, Flashy's love was intentional. Like, we was like, hey, bro, let's make some cool, some cool shit. Before, I mean, Flash is for sure one of my favorite artists. You know, you know, even when I first time I interviewed him, bro, he was, I was geeking out, you know what I mean? Cause I, I used to listen to his music all the time. You know? But I love his, his wordplay, different. He sounds, he has a different sound than everybody else, I feel, in San Diego. He got that church voice, man. Right. No cat. Right. That shit hard. I feel like an artist has to have something different that kind of makes them marketable, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? If not, you're gonna fall in that same lane and it, it's nothing gonna make you stand out because everybody's good in San Diego, mm-hmm. and that's one thing I learned about Flashy. You know, you know one thing keeks, I noticed, Keeks too. Keeks. Yeah, one one thing I noticed about like, there's some artists I would never work with. Interesting. Only because they sound like somebody else. I'm like, bro, if I wanted to do, go get a song by that nigga, I'll just hit him up. You feel me? Wow. So like, some people when you, I don't know, I look at it like, just like that. Like, if you sound like somebody else, bro. You not you, you're him. You Inter- interesting me? you say that though, because most music, most of these uh, artists these days are kind of copying other people. It's like oh, trendy yeah. sounds. What? You know what I'm saying? Young Slowby, bro. Boy, I didn't heard a lot of like <laughs> nigga. I swear <laughs> to God, a lot of motherfuckers that be is influential though. At the end of the day, so it's like I get it. You feel me? But leave that to them, bro. Like find you know what I'm saying. Be yourself, bro. Mm. So I don't know. That's crazy. So, like I said, you make a lot of these dope music, right? And you're making the the sound, the beats. Are you making like the chorus too as well? Sometimes I help out on hooks. So the question for me is, if you're curating most of that sound and the artists get like the attention mm-hmm. of, of all the work that you put, do you feel like you do you feel feel left out? Nah, I feel like the job has been complete. Because at the end of the day, I know the dynamic of like artistry where they're gonna be on stage, I'm not gonna be on stage. Like, I'm not gonna be on no P. Diddy shit dancing in the videos. You'll never <laughs> catch me. How many videos have I shot here and I'm just in the back? Hey, get in the video. I'm not getting in the video. Yeah, yeah. It's not about me, bro. I'm trying to uh, exploit you. Like, I want, it's like all the projects I be doing, it's ADA starring whoever the artist is. Right. Because y'all, y'all have to go on tour, like, you know? So it's like I'm just trying to contribute. You feel me? Play my role. Like I said, that's Stay one. In I, my lane. That's one me? thing. I when I first met you, man, like one thing I respect that you know, it respect it made me respect you on a different level because, like I said, when I talked to you, you were like only you you didn't care about yourself. You only focused on your other artists that you were working with. You didn't care about nothing else. Hey, man, can you get this this art interview? Can you do this for this artist? Can you do this for the artist? And you gotta be. Uh, unselfish person, you know what I mean, in the position that you're in right now. I don't have no ego in this shit, bro. That's That's crazy. The only thing, like, people think I do because I don't be social. I'm not anti-social. I'm more like, I don't know, I'm like socially selective. Like, I'm going to fuck with who give me the good energy, bro. Like, you got good energy on everything. You going to, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to make sure, like, Mm. especially when I see the vision, like, we going we gonna to get there because some people, they, they'll literally like look at, oh, he going hard boat. Can do one thing, like even just a phone, like just little shit, bro. They don't want to do it. I'm like, damn, that's why. Mm. You feel me? That's why. I'm like, damn, niggas can't get on. But I don't know. I feel like people just got to keep on doing, doing the work. I understand why some people won't help certain artists because some artists feel like this shit needs to be handed to them. Mm. Like, I don't know. Like, dealing with a whole bunch of artists is crazy. Like, 
<laughs> I be telling niggas like, bro, I understand. You ever watch Making the Band? Absolutely. Bruh. Legendary. <laughs> Diddy crazy, but at the same time, I understand why he like made niggas go get the cheesecake. You why? feel me? Why? <laughs> Nigga, you go get the cheesecake, bro. If you won't go get the cheesecake, bro, you you don't really want this shit, bro, because I can change your life type shit. That's, I understand that. I get you. Like, I don't know about what he got going on, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but I understand the cheesecake part where it's like, bro, damn. I used to be like, what the fuck is this nigga? Like, dealing with a whole bunch of artists. I was like, damn, some of these niggas just want you to just do everything for them. Like, bro, meet me halfway. How about that? Right. That's it. They don't want it bad enough. Or anything. But some, some of these artists do. Mm. And it's like, you got to focus on them because they're the ones that's going to make, they're going to be the good representation for the city. Absolutely. Who are some artists that, you know, have a, a crazy work ethic that you that you respect. I ain't gonna lie, Oway. Always nasty. Oway. Always. Oh, I do nasty. Crazy. Like he just wanna work. He just he just wrote he's just like a robot when it comes to rapping. But shit him. Me and B three have fun mm. every single time. No cap. Mm. Being there. What too much fun. Just like being creative and all that shit. Uh Flashy B, for sure. Nasty. Flashy B, we can literally sit down and it's just like pff, magic. I'm like, bro, this shit too easy. You feel me? Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't know. Sometimes like we'll sit down and, and, and work and just bounce ideas and just like come up with a cold track. I'm like, bro, we just did some crazy shit right now. Like, Let's go. And then do another one and then another one. So it's like, I don't know, the artists that like can kind of hold their own. Just doing their part, being able to rap, like what? This shit magic. If you get with me, if you can rap for real, it's magic. No mm. cap. Uh, another one, Compton ass TG. Nice on everything free, bro. Uh, me and him got a tape. He came for like two, three days straight, bro. Put on another one. Put on another one. He just going to start punching in. I'm like, damn, he he really do this shit, like for real. Uh, who else? Who else is like extra cold rapping? Have you, uh, have you have, who, who's, some, who's some rappers you want to like dream of to be working with? Like who's some like people you really want to work with in the in the future? Shit. Shit, anybody, everybody. I ain't gonna lie, I really would want to work with uh, Larry June. Funny that would be cold. That would be cold. <laughs> Larry 88 June. and Larry June would be cold. No cap. That would be cold. It in the past, be, it might in, be it might be on the way already though. But I don't know. Who are some people in the past that you work with? And you was like this starstruck and shit, man. Like damn, I work shit. with this motherfucker, man. That's crazy. Nigga. Dom Kennedy, bro. Stop. That's like the homie for real. like. It's crazy because it's like I don't know. Shit be happening, but at the same time, like niggas, you really used to listen to. Like when I first came over here, I was wasn't hip to know nothing. I met this one dude. He was from L.A. He was this, uh, one of my ex-girlfriends, like, sister's brother or whatever. But he put me on to, like, RJ, fucking mm. Mustard. Once I started listening to RJ, Mustard, and I started listening to Dom Kennedy, and fucking, I was already on Nipsey Hustle, and I was like, damn. Mm-hmm. This is that whole wave right here, YG, fucking all that shit. I'm like, damn, this is hella cold. And then, like, Ain't gonna lie, like when Get, Get Home Safely came out, that's when I like first came out here, bro. On everything, I was I was cold. Yeah. And then meeting him, I was like, damn, this nigga a regular nigga. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Yep. Real down to earth and shit. So I'm like, that was the right <clears throat> one. Um, shit, I've been I've been working. I don't know. There's a lot of people. That was one person though, for the show. Mm-hmm. What are some current projects that you're working on right now that you can talk about? Shit, I'm dropping this tape with. Uh, Siete Gang Yabby is called Jix in the Morning. That's his, <laughs> That's definitely Yabby. Jix in the Morning. Jix in the Morning. Like we dropped the, like two singles already. <laughs> uh, Team Spirit and Jix in the Morning. But right, we trying to figure out what Yabby be saying half the time. Hey, bro. Yabby, like, decode this hey, shit. It's crazy. Niggas won't give it up to Yabby, bro. Or anything. Yabby is a trendsetter, bro. Like I been, yeah. I literally was like one of my studios. I was right next to this other studio, and. uh like his link, like the lingo out here is coming from him and Keith. You yeah, feel me? So yeah. I'm like, I see it. Like people come around, they <laughs> throwing Jesus right there. They're like, oh, that's cool. You feel me? Yep. But I didn't see a lot of people like mimic him. I just seen this dude in Texas. He got a whole song sound just like Yabby. Yeah. 
I'm like, damn. <laughs> I just seen a lot of little, you know, kicking yab impersonators and all that shit. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. But well, it's it's dope though, cause that's you know that's your influence, yo. You know, 100%. You know what I'm saying? That's dope to see. You yeah. know what I mean? I be telling y'all, like, don't get mad, bro. Like, you they inspiration, bro. Like, you feel me? Yeah, yeah. They don't know who to be. They don't want to be like you. That's cool. You feel me? That's super dope. So what do jigs in the morning mean? What does that mean, bro? 6 a.m. 6 a.m. What, what the G? Jolitics? I don't know nothing, man. I just know. <laughs> I just type in the name of the songs and make the beats, bro. Hey, did, y'all be, did he create the beats and all that shit? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Y'all be creating that? I don't everything. Bro, man. stop. Bro, if you don't know that, you're lying to yourself, bro. Like, Yabby Creative Feats. Yabby, Keek, or anything. I first heard it with Yab Keek and, and B3. They were talking about Feats and, Me too. and shit. Me too. And it was like, at first I was like, what the fuck y'all niggas talking about? Because <laughs> I'm not from over here. So I'm like, bro. I'll be, but at the same time, like, I see a lot of people. They, you know, that's what I, there's niggas in the Bay, LA, they got it in their songs now. I'm like, yep. random niggas in, like, that's cold. Yep. Well, that's hard. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Cause I, like I said, I've been hearing them like everybody around the whole West Coast now. They talk about beats. And I heard Even down in Texas, bro. Like, that's crazy. It's big, bro. It's bigger than you think. It's yeah. like a, they got like a cult following, bro. It's, it's hard. That's dope, man. That's super dope, bro. So what about, I've been mean, knowing you've been focusing on doing shows and stuff like that. So, like, talk about your shows that you've been, you know, making. In, in. Shit, we, I be working with people, bro. Uh, shout out DJ Playboy. Mm. Uh, DJ Playboy, he been, he been working with me, for, like, since I opened up my first studio. And when I met him, he was just a, a, a videographer. or Like, he just did photography and shit. Showed him how to do, like, engineering and shit. Mm-hmm. But then he picked up the DJ and shit. On some like you know, just doing it and then start fucking with uh, a couple artists, start throwing some shows, and I was like, hey, bro, you need to start doing this shit, bro. You a young nigga, you gotta do this shit, bro, or anything. But um, yeah, we just did a couple shows, the EBK and Jack show uh, last month, and we got Big Sad coming on the twenty sixth. Oh, that's dope. I seen that. Don't worry, anything. We got some more shit, but you know, wait to lock it in. And the, you know what I'm saying? Them shows be popping too, bro. Not for real. Don't worry, anything. I've been noticing one thing about a lot of these shows in on the West Coast, it's it's mo- it's a lot of white people and Mexican in the crowd though. Bro, what do you expect? Like you know, <laughs> we in Mexico. <laughs> Come on. We in Mexico, bro. Bro, I look at the crowd but like Danny, there's more white people in this crowd, bro. bro. That's the culture out here, bro. Is is you know, a lot of people think it's supposed to be like a whole bunch of like black people and all that just like bro. The, Look at the stats, bro. Like it's thirteen percent mm-hmm. is African American and rest is Hispanic, yeah, and white people, bro. And then at the same time, it's like nigga, it's a military city, so it's like, you feel me? So it's a lot of shit. But I think that's dope, though. Like, I remember we did House of Blues last year in the summertime, August, and like the whole crowd was Hispanic for uh, Yabby and Key. I'm like, that's hard. That's hella dope, bro. That's hard. That's the culture out here, though. Like black and brown. You feel me? So. Mm-hmm. It's only right. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Right, That's hella dope. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love it, man. Um, there's a rumor I want to talk to you about that I've been hearing a lot lately, bro. They're saying, like, the the sound of the West Coast is dying, bro. So what do you think about that? They're saying, like, the sound of the West Coast is dying. Who's saying that? You know, on, <laughs> on the Internet, you know. Internet is a Instagram. dangerous place, man. Instagram is not even a real place, bro. I don't know. I feel like. I don't know. I feel like the West Coast just need more money poured into it. Let's go. A lot of shit is just marketing, bro. You feel me? And then at the same time, I understand why a lot of shit does it. A lot of motherfuckers do sound the same, bro. Same beat, same beat pattern, same shit. Mm. Where it's like, I don't know. I just feel like a little switch up and some money poured into it. You feel me? It's going to blossom. You feel me? Because, mm. I don't know, I feel like I, I feel like the, the music I make with people is, is like, unique. It is. So it's like, I just feel like we just need more exposure, for real. Because, like, the same shit gets played, you feel me? It'd be the same little, like, starter kit rapper shit <laughs> that be happening. So it'd be like, it's cool, but at the same time, that shit get old as fuck. It's like, 
you downplaying the culture where it's like, but there's niggas that can really rap. Always be comparing it like, all right, if Kodak was to come to this, come to the city, who would he work with and who would like hold their own on a song with him? And you feel me? Mm. Or like a dirt come to the city because those are stars, bro. Yeah. Ain't nobody really, you know, ain't, ain't nobody really thinking like that. Like, there's a couple artists that have, but it's like it's only like one or two. Yeah. And there'd be people that's lit. But that's one thing about that West Coast that I see that's like people are content because like I know a couple of Bay artists that are lit up in the Bay don't have to leave the Bay. They can go make like, they can go do a show in the Bay and be cool for a year. Like, you feel me? Right, right, right. Whereas like, it's, it's like his own country. <laughs> you feel me? So it's like, <laughs> you can be lit from California and be cool being lit over here because you know, it's, it's, it's concentrated. It's a lot of people here. So I get it. But at the same time, like, you hear somebody from Florida, you everybody in the whole country going to hear them. Yeah, 100%. So it's like, yeah. it just, you know, it just needs to be a power shift, you feel me? You know, I be thinking sometimes, I mean, I could be wrong, though, but I feel like sometimes on the West Coast, we have this culture that other people could probably can't relate to, mm-hmm. you know, outside of the West Coast, you know, know only, only us. You know, a lot of the lingo and everything mm-hmm. like that, so they probably can't relate to a lot of the stuff it's, in the music that I feel we, like it's, we produce. It's the culture people don't understand it but i feel like once you understand it it's like damn it's actually kind of hard super dope it's dope but it's just like some places they ain't got to deal with certain shit so like i get it but at the same time it's like i don't know mm-hmm. i just feel like just niggas gotta get, keep on working bro because some of this shit that be lit it'd be cool but it'd be cool for only one one mode where it's like some shit you can listen to all day mm-hmm. on repeat some shit you listen to, like, damn, this shit cool. But I'm going to go back over here and listen to Boss Man D-Lo or some shit. Like, you feel me? Like, mm-hmm. some people just got to step their bars up. Because a lot of niggas making music for, like, a small, you, like, the disc record shit. Like, this record shit, like, that's cool. But I feel like that's for a small population. Like, you making this shit for 25 people, 30 people, 50 people max. That's cool. You feel me? Yeah. So it's like, you got to broaden the sound. Make it, make it more user-friendly. Well, if you think about it, lyricism is coming back, you know, mm-hmm. thank God to Kendrick and, oh, you yeah. know, this whole battle that's going on right now. Oh, I God. think that's kind of, it's going to start, you know. I, I feel like it's coming back, bro. Every er, Like, there's always eras in music, like the feel good music, the super crazy shit, like, you know, the lyrical shit. I feel like it's coming back. Like, I see, like, I be watching, like, Hit Boy, mm. Hit Boy and, and Big Hit, bro. They coming in cold. Right. Like crazy quote like and that's family business too so it's like it's hard mm-hmm. but if they bring in that the, like you know the wordplay back a lot of people just be saying anything on the, on these beats the beats be really saving a lot of niggas bro <laughs> no for real if they i'm telling you the nigga they have a cold like sample in the background and, and all that shit like oh this shit hard and they just be saying anything but people got accustomed to that and it's cool but at the same time like it doesn't last damn so Y'all heard that. <laughs> he, he said the beats be saving y'all. Nah, for real. <laughs> I, I know a couple songs, like, they be hard. Yeah. And the beat just, it'll make it even harder. And then some beats be like, some people be like, oh, like, oh that shit is hard. You know, people be like, oh, hey, the beat hard. <laughs> 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 I be hearing that shit a lot. But that's yeah. just me just like, you know, listening to what people say. Like, I'll, I'll record a lot of people, so I be seeing it firsthand, like. Mm-hmm. My damn, this beat is hella hard. You can say anything on it, and it's gonna sound tough. Damn. But some people, you know, but I don't know. It's it's, it's subjective, bro. There's a lot of shit that goes into making music. So, hey, one question for you: What's your hardest beat that you personally think you ever made? It's not even out yet. Ooh, you sitting on it? <sighs> yes, sir. Eighty eight got that bad boy in the treasure chest. Nah, for real. You and you hear it, and you be like, "What the fuck?" Mm. There's no way. Everybody think I'm a West Coast producer, and I'm not. I just I had to learn how to do this shit, like mm. super bad, like because I wanted to work. That yeah. was it. Yeah. But now nah, I got some shit. I did uh, janky ass G's. That was like one of my favorite beats. That oh, that was cold too. Yeah. Yeah, that was cold. I had, to, I had to kidnap Keek for that. No Ooh, cap. That was cold. Keek used to be my neighbor on everything. I used to pick. I remember I picked him up in the morning. 
and basically kidnapped him. Like, hey, yeah, let's go to the <laughs> studio, bro. Oh, yeah, I'm going to pick you up. Yeah, we went there, and he, like, freestyled, and I was just taking parts that he was doing and then just making, building the song like that. And he was like, nah, bro, let's redo this whole shit. I'm like, nope. <laughs> Hell no. What? Fuck no. I'm like, nah. Hey, the thing about Keek, bro, I don't think he knows how dope he is, man. I right. think he doesn't. I think Keek be in his own little world, bro, right. and he, he just be, be doing what he wants. He don't be knowing. Like, I'm like, bro, look at your engagement, bro. Just look, <laughs> look what I'm looking at, bro. <laughs> like, janky ass jeans. I remember, like, last year, it just, it just went crazy for no reason. I don't know what happened. I think he had, like, performed at a show, and, like, a whole bunch of people, I don't know what they did. Literally from that show, it went from, like, I watched it like blow up on TikTok, and I'm like, damn, mm-hmm. this shit like three like three years old. That shit went from like thirty thousand to like sixteen million. It's probably like twenty one million right now. Damn, on that's TikTok, wow. Like, that's cold. I'm like, damn, that's wild. That's hard. That gotta make you feel good, bro. Like you just just you get my create feet. something, and all of a sudden it just blows up. You know what I'm saying? Just get my feet wet, bro. Let's go, bro. So give me some game for these up and coming. Uh, Producers or beat makers who wants to be the next, you know, eighty eight. Man, give me some game that you do acquire you? throughout the time of you doing your shit. Man, first like making music, bro. Some people would just be one, just do shit, mm-hmm. learn how to do this shit, and then you just do your homework, bro. I learned all everything I, with music. I didn't learn off YouTube. What? How to engineer all this shit off YouTube University, bro. No cap. No way. Well, I got my BA. No cap. <laughs> From YouTube University. No cap. Stop it's it, like, bro. I don't know. I feel like if you really want to do music shit, bro, you just get whatever you can get your hands on and, and, and learn how to master it. That's it. Damn. For real. That's crazy. What are some challenges that you, uh, you know, ran into coming up, you know? Dealing with people's egos. Ooh. Interesting. Interesting. I can only imagine. But I feel like it makes it easier for me to work with them if they have an ego because it's like I can identify what your trigger is. Some people, all they're like, oh, damn, you going to let this nigga eat you on the track? That's crazy. <laughs> Sometimes that's all I got to say. Nigga's like, you know what? I'm going to redo my verse. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Yeah, we re- re- rewrite that bullshit, man. <laughs> but for the most part it's just like i don't know getting getting people in that mode is like what i like to do shit because i look at music as like some some spiritual shit bro i'll be in there vibe the fuck out niggas don't be you know i'm like bro don't touch me when i'm making beats don't do none of that shit you're gonna fuck with my whole shit mm. like just flow just be you know some niggas i used to hate but my old ceo <laughs> My brother used to bring motherfuckers up. I'm like, bro, they used to, hey, bro, hey, add a, uh, add a, I'm like, bro, stop touching me. <laughs> the fuck? You gonna fuck up my vibe. <laughs> I heard that. Have you ever had, a, like, ambitions to be an artist? Nah. I look at it like, bro, I found my lane. A lot of people be asking me, like, bro, why don't you start rapping? Like, I'm, nah, I make beats, bro. Damn. Like, it's a collaborative effort to me like just making music is collaborative effort like i could if i wanted to i would i probably could it's mm-hmm. not that hard you feel mm-hmm. me and there's people you know but at the same time i i find it is it's faster to drive in, in one lane versus trying to drive in everybody else's lane so it's like that's a fact do what you're good or anything like i used to want to be a video- videographer or anything just because i didn't want to wait for motherfuckers i'm like man, i'm mm-hmm. tired of waiting on videos but I'll be shooting videos for artists, like just trying to get shit done. Cause I'm like, bro, I don't like to wait. I like to get shit. I, like, I have an idea in my head. I can like, like when we make a song, like I'll be telling my folks, like, bro, I already see the video. I already see you performing this shit. Mm. Where it's like, nigga, I can, I want to see it all the way through. Mm. Like some people, like they'll never hear certain beats. Cause I'm like, bro, you gonna talk about bullshit on here. <laughs> but some people I know that can rock with it and, and make something out of it I'm like oh yeah I'm gonna help you bring this shit all the way to life because it's, mm-hmm. I, it's, I have a very vivid imagination like it's crazy like if I had like what if I had like uh-huh, like 10 mil or some shit like what <laughs> I'll put the whole what the whole west coast would be in one, one, one swoop Damn. Be, San Diego would be on, on top 
Yeah. Bro, we're coming, bro. I'm telling you, man. We got the talent, man. We definitely got the talent. We have the artist. You know what I'm saying? We just need that. We got the resources too, bro. You think so? For sure. Really? Come on. What? We do. It's just a lot of people just, you know, I understand, like, you know, a lot of people don't understand collaborating. Mm. So it's like some people, they're like, oh, yeah, I need this much for, to do that. And I'm like, look, bro, when we sell this shit to the label, bro, we're going to get that. You feel mm. me? But at the same time, I get it. That's why I do a lot of in house shit. That's where the whole the gang part came from. Like, I think everything is in house. Like, you don't have just a one stop shop. You mm. feel me? Multiple different personalities, bro. Collaborating. That's it. Like, I don't I only like like really working with niggas. That if you good at videography, and that's what you want to be known for, I'm gonna help you. Like, I want you to I want you to be that. Like, I don't, don't want to work with nobody that's just doing this shit for the bread. Like, there's no passion. I've shot videos for motherfuckers. I didn't want to shoot videos for and. Uh, I understand how it feels, but so it's like having people that really want to work makes a difference. Mm. Like the quality of everything. So it's like even artists, like if you ain't serious about your artistry, bro, go to the Coronado Bridge, bro. <laughs> and jump. jump. <laughs> <laughs> no cap. You're right, bro. You're right 100%, 110% because we need those serious people around, you know what I mean? Because like I said, that's all it be. We want to come up, baby. Some people, they get in position mm -hmm. and play with it. I just noticed that shit. So it's like, pfft, don't let me in the door. I'm going to lay everybody down. Let's go. So it's like, that's how it's going to go. What's next for 88? A whole lot of music this summer. This summer is going to be lit. Give me something that, you know, you can talk to us about. Some standout tracks or standout artists you've been working with that's going to change the game for us. What's up? It's crazy. Flash should be uh, Lil Knock and Yabi got some shit. Mm. That's all I'm going to say. They got some like shit. That. And it's not like the shit that you're used to listening to. Like Lil Knock, he, he, he about to. Y'all better. Game time. about to drop all your music now. Like, no okay. cap. Game time. Raising the bar. That's some crazy that. shit. Bro, favorite taco shop in San Diego? You know, it's crazy. I used to eat Mexican food, bro. What do you mean used to eat Mexican bro, food? I don't eat Mexican food no more. I, what? I, hey, cut, bro, the, cut, look, cut the podcast, look, man. Look, 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 check no it out, Mexican bro. food. You in look, San Diego. Look, look. I used to, when I first moved out here, bro, I ate it for six years straight. Holy shit. Got to the point where it's like, nigga, I can't do this no more. I'm like, bitch, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to die. What? I was like, what? I, I can't do it. Like me, I don't even, I don't be eating junk food. Like junk food. For mm -hmm. real, for real. Yeah. At all. Like a king. But when you was eating that Mexican food, where'd you go? What was that? The top pop, top uh, taco shop that you went, the top one. It was a couple. That go to, that go to one though. That you need to you need to endorse. Like this is the spot. Man, they gonna have to pay me to endorse that shit. Bro. Okay, tell me about okay, what if one of your <laughs> what if one of your relatives come to San Diego and they be like, Hey man, we want some tacos, we want some Mexican food and I tell him to, to go to them. TJ, bro. TJ okay. really, TJ really got some. I went there. I went to Rosarito one time, and, and I disagree, bro. What? You're crazy. I disagree. What? I was eating. This is the. I went there at the time when I was eating it all the time, and I was like, "Damn, this is cold." But now there's some shops out here. Um, I've been to a couple. El Paisa. I forget what street it's on. It's, it's like near the bridge and shit. Uh, there's one in Imperial Beach. I used to go Don Pancho's. I think. I don't okay. know. But I don't really be off that shit, bro. I'd rather go eat in Jedi. <laughs> I heard that, <laughs> no bro. Cap. I heard East that. African food, you feel me? Absolutely. I heard that, bro. I know they're going to kill me over that, but, man, I went to TJ, bro, and them food, them tacos wasn't that good, bro. They were crazy. I went over there, and I was like, damn, y'all about to close? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, shit, let me get a couple more. Hell yeah. Nah, they, they street tacos is hit, hitting for sure. Yeah. Now, I ain't going to lie, there's... I, like I've tried LA as as these Mexican food definitely way better. One no cap. one ten percent. I feel like everything below the eight is cool. I mean I'm not gonna lie, bro. I've been to some dope spots in LA. You know what I mean? I'm but talking about like, for San Diego. Like I've been to one in Poway and I was like, this is not it, bro. What the fuck? You. I feel you. That was crazy. I, I was like, you. why did I even do that to myself? Yeah. And it was like fish tacos. I was like playing with myself. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Yeah. I feel you on that. 
Oh, yeah, Bro, I appreciate you, man. You know, um, like I said, man, you're very uh, important to the sound of San Diego, bro. And a lot of the shit that I hear coming out of San Diego, the dope shit, bro, is 88 The Gang. You know what I mean? So you're making a lot of these uh, rappers' careers, man. You know what I mean? And we appreciate you for sure, man. Oh, God. I appreciate you, know what you too, man. I'm grateful, bro. For Hell everything. yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. We're just trying to make good music. That's it. Bro, do you want to leave anything to your fans, man? The people who love your music that, that supports you. Shit, keep keep fucking with me. I fuck with y'all, bro. Or anything. Pop out to these shows and, and be on the lookout for these next couple of projects that's going to drop before June, July. There's going to be a couple back to back. Just Hell listen yeah. to that shit, bro. Or anything. It's the culture of what? Everything. I heard that, bro. And like I say, man, I appreciate you for being unselfish. You Hell know what yeah. I mean? Because like I say, when I first met you, bro, you don't, you didn't focus on yourself. I was like, man, the fuck this, what do you mean, man? Get this interview going, bro. It took me like a, almost a year to get this interview, my guy. Because <laughs> I didn't, you know, do all your other artists, which, uh, I, which real, I was going to do anyways. You know what yeah. I mean? I, it was a pleasure to it do it. It wouldn't make sense to me. You know I mean? To me, it's just like, look, I'm going to be in the background. This probably be the only one you get for me. No cap. Damn. It's only it's probably the only one <laughs> for free. You feel me? <laughs> like <laughs> you feel me? But I fuck with you, bro. On anything, I like your I like your your platform is definitely what San Diego needs. So it's like I, I want to support it. You feel me? Man, I appreciate. I feel like you. we need more of that, like more support, and less suggestions. You feel me? One to ten percent. You feel me? We definitely need to come together, man. Because we we got all you say we got all the resources, we got the talent, but we need to work us work together like Voltron. No, you know what I'm saying? Or anything, but I got the Infinity Stones, bro. I got, <laughs> I got some code. I got some shit. I got one artist I didn't even tell you about. Like I gotta make you sign some shit for him. Bro. <laughs> what? It's, what? Dude, Pay attention. That's all I gotta tell my fuckers. Pay attention, bro. You you gonna see what's going on next man. couple. You gonna see what's going on this year. Or anything. I'm gonna call you the mystery man. Hey man, Wizard of Oz, bro. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Hey man, I appreciate you for coming on, man. Big Hendo, Hendo and Plug. We got the. Young legend in the building, Eddie at the game. You know what I'm saying? So appreciate you for everything you do. You yeah, know, yeah. supporting the community, supporting San Diego, putting us on the map, all that, all the above. You know what I mean? So, hey, man, love you, bro. Keep doing it. If I can do anything to help you, let me know. Got you, Big Hendo. Hell yeah. Eddie at the game. We out. We'll see you. <laughs>